Hello and welcome to the fifth lecture in the R tutorial lecture series for Professor Kozak's class. Today we're going to be talking about all of the stuff that hasn't been covered in the previous lectures that's kind of important. So this lecture is going to be a hodgepodge of things like setting the working directory, importing data from a CSV file, plotting data, and using libraries. So first of all, let's talk about setting the working directory. So the, the working directory is a concept in computer science or operating systems. It's the directory that it is uh, seeing when you look at, when you, know, when you try to load data or when you try to import data. And so what I mean by that is, for example, um, I'm gonna jump ahead slightly. What we're gonna do is we're gonna try to load one of these CSV files. So let's say we wanna load, and we'll get into what this read.csv file does in a moment, but okay. And let's set uh, test equal to that. So let's say we're trying to read this data. Well, okay, let's let's run this first. Now keep in mind that the working directory for your computer is um, that the working directory that our tutorial will um, default to is whatever directory opens up whenever you open R Studio. So for example, when I open R Studio, it's going to go to my home directory naturally, and then I needed, and then as we did in the first lecture, I needed to navigate from there to this folder. Well, the problem is the working directory is sort of the default directory that R will be looking at when you're trying to import things. So like I, like we showed here, although this lecture five data doesn't show up, you know, shows up in our files view, um, it, we can't import it. And why is that? That's because um, compared to where, you know, compared to where our tutorial or our studio thinks we are, it's in a different place. So because I'm normally at home and the next directory down is desktop, I need to navigate there. Um, and then I need to go into the R tutorial folder and then this, and then pull up this data. Now, it, by looking through that path, R studio can see that, can actually see the data that we're looking for. But that's kind of inconvenient because you didn't remember where you originally were and where the data is in comparison to that. There's a really a much easier way to import data than you know remembering your full path and passing it. And that is to set whatever directory you want to be working in as your work directory. And the way you can do that is navigating the directory you want in here, then clicking more, set as working directory, and then R Studio is gonna run this little command here. And now, for example, if we wanted to, if we were to remove this and we wanted to load that data, Ta-da, we don't have to pass it any path at all. Okay, so that's the that's setting the working directory. Let's now talk about importing data. So specifically today, we're gonna to be talking about importing data from CSV files. So, okay, now that we've you know, sort of gone over that, let's talk about what a CSV file is. So CSV is the extension at the end of a file. So the dot CSV. And CSV stands for comma separated value. And it is a extremely common format for large sets of data. For example, like, you know, climate data or temperature data that you might import from an organization or just any data you might want to find online and work with. So the reason it's called comma separated values is because a long time ago, it was the standard format for data, for importing data or for um, storing data. And it was always separated with a comma. However, nowadays, Comma separated value just means that it's a format that you can store data with, and the data could be separated by all kinds of things. It's not always a comma anymore. Um, for example, I'm gonna go ahead and open up one of these CSV files. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna click on the CSV file, click here, type click view file, and that's gonna pull it up here. And this will just show the file in its native format up in, this, up in the file view. So we're gonna close out all these. And you can see here that this is like, you know, the data is basically just this X, Y label, the one, two, three, four, five, the five columns of it, or the five um, rows of it, and then some data in there. And notice that the data is here is not separated by commas, despite the fact that it's a CSV, it's separated by spaces. There's a space between each of the elements. So that's one example of what a CSV might be. You might also have this, which is another type of CSV, which is just the exact same CSV file, but using commas instead of um, spaces for a separator. Both of those are viable. You could see CSVs with all kinds of separators, dashes, 
you know, anything. Um, I'm gonna show you how to import data from CSVs with, with commas as separators and with spaces as separators, but um, it's pretty easy to, you know, import something that uses tabs as a separator, something like that. When we call a function, there's gonna be something you can input for the different type of separator and you just put whatever separator you expect it to be. Okay, so let's go ahead and, well, let's, let's keep this one open. So here we see, we're gonna import this CSV example one into R and note, you know, we see that there's spaces are separator, which is really all we need to see here. And there's only, and there's uh, labels at the top, but there's only one row of them or only, yeah, only one row of them. So we don't need to worry about that. As long as there's only one row for the labels for the columns, um, our, you know, our functions will take care of it for us. So we're going to call our first thing um, imported data. So we said variable equal to, and we're going to do read dot CSV. That's the function. So, and then you have to pass it the file that you want to load. So CSV example one dot CSV is what we're doing here. And you want to pass the separator that's in there. And here, we're just going to put um, uh, the string that is just a space and voila, we get this imported data and it looks kind of, and it looks exactly like we would expect it to. Um, the thing you might note here is that instead of saying, instead of being a matrix or anything else, this is going to be five observations of two variables. That's because this, um, by default, R imports data using the read.csv function as a um, something called a data frame, which is sort of a more complex data structure that we aren't going to get into. Um, you probably will see it at some point when you, you know, if you work more with R, but there's a lot, it's complex and we don't have enough time to cover it for in this short lecture series. So instead, um, so what I'm gonna show you guys how to do is how to convert this data frame into a matrix um, that we, you guys have seen how to, that you guys have seen before and you should know how to work with. So the way you do that is you just do um, another variable name. So that equal to data dot matrix, and then the um, data frame, the, um, yeah, the variable name of the data frame. And so now there we go. And now this looks as we expect. And it, it looks, notice that they look very similar when you click on them. Um, in reality, you could use a data frame for pretty much everything that I'm gonna be doing here. Um, That'll get you the first value or the second there, or like you can use it like it would be a, you know, like it would be a matrix, but there's some functions that won't work on data frames that will work on matrices. And, you know, the, um, and there's some functions that'll work on data frames, but not matrices. And everything I've taught you so far is we'll work on matrices. So we're gonna treat, we're gonna work with it as a matrix right now. I know that you could do all of this stuff, everything I'm gonna show you in this video with just the data frame as well. Okay, so now that I showed you how to import, how to convert it to a matrix, which you guys should be familiar with. Um, let's look at if we wanted to, remember that this CSV file was space separated and this CSV file is actually comma separated for the values. So let's see how to import that. Um, okay, so let's go here to, this time we're gonna import example two. And all we're going to do is change the separator to comma. So actually, let me clear this out because it's the same data, just a different, um, yeah. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and do this. And voila, we got our data back as formatted. If we passed it as space, however, see how it would kind of get messed up because it would put the commas there and it wouldn't notice. So, okay. So now we've re now we've learned how to import data, um, you or CSV data. There's um there's other functions to import other types of data. Again, not going to get into it, but okay. So, so now let's talk about graphing. Um, okay, so let's clear everything. So graphing. And so there's, there's just like importing data, there's a lot of different functions and a lot of different ways to plot or graph data. Um, there's no, R is no exception to that. There's tons of different ways to do things, to plot histograms, to plot, you know, heat maps and stuff like that. 
Um, and there's modules you can use or packages you can use that will, you know, that have that make plotting easier or make or allow you to do specific types of plots, all of that kind of stuff. We're going to be talking specifically about the out of the box functionality in R, um, specifically the plot function and a couple of supporting functions to that. But again, feel free to explore some of the other, you know, packages or other ways to plot on your own. And if you have questions, feel free to email me. So, okay. So first of all, let's get some data. Um, we're going to do, uh, read.csv file equals let's do plotting data. Let's look at what that data is. Yep, and it uses spaces here. Okay, so, okay. And then let's, let's um, convert that to a matrix just for ease. Um, okay, so there we go. Now we've got this matrix for ourselves. So how do you plot? So how do you um, how do you graph data? Well, you use the basic plot function in R. And so what this takes is you need to pass it the x, an x, and a y variable. The you know, and it'll plot the um, the y variable with respect to x. So for example, here, uh, let's just do a really basic example: one, two, three, and y is one, two, three. Um, you see here how in what is normally the files view, um, a little the it's going to switch over to this plots tab, and it's going to show the plot that we just plotted there. And you see we got one, uh, one to one, two at two, three at three. Okay. So let's look at something else slightly more complex because that's sort of an um, that's really not that you know not that interesting. But let's say we wanted to look at plottable data, and also let's um, let's pull up plottable data. So that we've got this x, y sine, y cos here. And x seems to be iterating, you know, down to some value. And these values appear to be the sine and cos of what the x value is. So let's run, um, let's do this with the, let's take the first column as x and y is the second column. Okay. And there we go. That's a, as we saw with what this is, that's a sine function. It looks to be going out to about four pi. Um, and notice how there's like, it's big and like sort of um, these, like it's like a, uh, a fat black line through this. Um, you might be able to see that there are, that that is actually just points being plotted here. That's because there's just a bunch of points really close to each other. Okay. So, um, but that's kind of ugly, right? Like you maybe you don't want those the you know the fat black line for this to be um maybe you want it to be something like you know sort of a skinny black line. Um so this leads to the the cool part about you know the plot function in R is that you can pass it parameters to sort of change up how it plots things. So let's run that function again. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm going to make it use a line instead of points. And so that's, you're gonna use this type parameter for it. And I'm just gonna pass it L, which means line. And so now we're gonna get the skinny black line that runs along it. And that looks a little bit better. Um, you can also pass it B here and that'll plot both lines. And for example, if we wanted to do here, this will make it a little bit easier to see. Oh, we don't wanna do that. We wanna do this. Um, that'll use both points and lines. Um, and it defaults to points, but you can also just pass it P um, and that'll also do points. Okay, so now that we've seen how to plot a line, let's go ahead and run, um, maybe we wanna change the color of this, for example. So let's make it a line, but if we wanna change the color, we could do um, call, and then we do the color, the name of the color we wanna use. And there's a couple of you know default colors like blue, red, green, yellow, black, you know, et cetera. Um, you can use uh, the help. You can use, you know, help or Google to find out uh, additional colors you can use. 
So, okay, but that's changed it now to being this blue, um, this sort of blue line here. Okay, so now we've got this. So now let's go ahead and say, well, what if, um, you know, one, what if we don't like these, these labels here? Notice that they're kind of ugly. They're the names, the variables we pass to it. So we can change that by doing, um, by running the function again, but now we can pass xlab and then we can say, um, and that's gonna be the label for X, the horizontal part. And then we're gonna do, and you can do Y lab equals the, um, and this is gonna be our vertical part. And so there we go. Now that looks a little bit better, but maybe we wanna add a title to it. You can add a title by doing main. Um, let's do just that. And there we go. Now that'll show up up top. Okay, okay, now we have this um, this plot. But let's say, you know, we wanted to plot the, um, let's say we want to plot something else on this x-axis. Or let's say we want to plot something else uh, in addition to just this one line. Let's say we want to plot another line. So for example, let's say that this line was the temperature of, you know, the temperature versus time in one country. And we want to plot another country's temperature versus time to see how they might relate. So what we can do is we can call this lines function with the, x equals the same x value and y as the other function or the other data we want to plot on the same plot. And let's say we want this to be red for some reason. Okay, so what this lines function does is it just adds another plot to the, um, to the current plot that, uh, that uses a line with the x and y values specified. And you might, you know, and uh, you could change it to any color you want. Um, if you wanted to do points, there's a points function that's the exact same thing, but it just plots it as points rather than line, rather than you know a line. So those are ways to plot additional, you know, additional pieces of data on the same plot. So now let's say we wanted to add a legend to this plot just so it was easy to understand. Well, that's not too bad. Um, you can use the legend function and you pass it where you want the um a string that is no spaces in it where you want it to where you want this you know this legend to go i like putting my legends in the top left but maybe you want to go top right would also be viable top left is viable um bottom left bottom right are viable there's a couple others you can look up all the different possibilities um with a quick google search i'd be happy to give you more if you are um if you want to email me but okay and then you need to pass it the um, the labels you want for these. So, for example, we're you know here we're doing sine. Um, I believe the first one was sine, and the second one's going to be cos. And then, or here we go. We'll make this a little clearer. Sine of x, cos sine of x. Okay. And then we then want to do. Um, uh, we need to pass it the colors, but we want to you know add multiple, we want to have um, two different colors here because actually, I believe it's, is it blue and red? Yeah, it's blue and red. Um, and the reason we need to pass these as a concatenated list is because um, there's two different, you know, lines that we want to have a legend for. And if you had three lines, you know, three lines on this plot, you would use, you need to concatenate uh, three different values for the name of it the color, and as we're about to see, LTY is it, which stands for line type. There we go. And now we have this, um, now we have these, uh, and now we have this legend up here in the top right for it. Okay, so that's the basics of plotting. There's a couple other things you may wanna know, um, such as how you change the axis limits, and that's just xlim, ylim are the variables you'll pass to the plot function um, for those. So now let's get to the final piece of this, um, of this lecture. I'm sure you guys are tired of my voice and tired of listening to me and watching me. So let's go ahead and, and you can clear out these plots. First of all, you can, sorry, before anything else, let's talk. You can export these plots just by hitting save image and then save it to you know, the directory, the image format and the name of the plot and the name of it. So we're gonna go with, um, We're just gonna go .png, because that's what it needs to be. Then we're gonna save it. And now if we go to files, pull this thing up. 
my image viewer, you can't really see that probably, but that is saved properly. The, um, the, you know, that'll be, now you have a picture of the plot for yourself. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, packages and libraries. So I'm gonna be, so let's, first of all, there are um, a lot of different packages, like I said, and there's no way I could go through all of them. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just look at a single, uh, a single package called UTF-8, which is just a package that lets you, that sort of helps you work with, you know, internet, um, an internet encoding language that lets you like, you know, if you were to say to pull data down from the internet into R, you'd probably need to use this package sort of to format it properly, but it um, doesn't really do anything important for us now. I'm just gonna show you how to install the package and how to set the package into your environment. So that way you, you know, your so we Studio actually sees it and will let you use the functions that are built inside of it. So the way um, you install the package is you use this install packages function. Then you pass it a string with the name of the package you want to install. Like I said, today we're going to be installing UTF-8. Um, okay, well, um, and it's being a little bit weird, so, but we're going to install this. Okay, and notice that, you know, there's this red text, it says trying, downloaded, all of that. When you install the package, um, it may take significantly longer and it, there may be a lot more red text. The only reason it doesn't take me very long is I already installed this package before this video. But um, don't worry if there's a ton of red text that shows up. If there's red text that says error, or if it says error installing at the end, then that's a problem. And you may need to poke around and do some troubleshooting. But um, but you know, as long as it says downloaded at the end and then shows you where the binary packages are, um, it doesn't matter what this like where these are, or what they say, or anything like that. Just the fact that that showed up means that it's probably installed correctly. But okay, so that's how you install a package. And you know, don't worry if it takes a while to do because you're gonna need it because it probably will the first time you install a package or the first time you install a big package. Um, but if I try to use UTF, um, there's like these kind of, there's these functions, but that's not the actual ones we're looking for. Um, I just know that because I've used the package before. But um, let's see, you know, once you've installed the package, you then need to, um, run this library function with the name of the package and that'll import it into the RStudio environment. Um, and now if I run UTF-8, you're gonna see a bunch more possibilities. That's because this function has actually been, um, that's because this library has actually been imported. All right, so that is the lecture for today. Um, if you have anything, any questions about it or anything more that you'd like to about feel free to email me or search google um thank you very much for your time and have a nice day